Hi, and welcome to our CSR presentation. My teammates, Simon, Emily, and myself will be taking you through um, some key CSR literature and its relation to our choosing company, Beach Energy. Beach Energy was founded in 1961 as an oil and natural gas exploration and production company. They have since became, become a key supplier to the Australian East Coast natural gas market, and they also boast the title for Australia's largest onshore oil producer. They currently have five operating basins across Australia and New Zealand, which speak to their company vision to be Australia's premier multi-basin upstream oil and gas company. The CSR initiatives which Beach are undertaking are outlined in their sustainability report, um, which we referenced their 2019 report. Um, this is based on a materiality assessment, which was conducted in 2015 and identified some key areas of sustainability um, to prioritize for the company. Uh, firstly, they've undertaken initiatives to improve safety um, in the workplace, as well as advance the development and retention of their workforce. Um, they've done this through new and improved reward and leadership programs, um, as well as the establishment of a three-year diversity and inclusion program. Um, another area of concern was community contribution. Beach have reported in 2016 that they've made 0 0.98 million dollars um, in community contributions, um, some of which have gone to the District Landcare Network and the Royal Flying Doctors. Their initiatives also focus on environmental concerns. Um, this is to improve their management of accidental spills um, and to do this they've developed some storage and training systems as well as reviewing their response um, process which they have. Um, they've to manage the water brought up the, um, during extraction of oil and gas they have introduced an initiative where the water is placed in basins to allow for uh, natural um, evaporation and it also provides a water source for wildlife and um, wi wildlife and livestock. Um, and their 2019 report has also mentioned a groundwater re-injection program, which they're currently investigating. Uh, they also uphold a program to mitigate biodiversity risks in their exploration projects by ensuring that appropriate planning, operations and rehabilitation strategies are used um, by the company. Furthermore, they've begun to aim to include uh, assessing climate risks into their project decision-making, um, measuring and reporting carbon emissions and setting targets to encourage innovation to drive emission reduction. Beach Energy has been doing the corporate social responsibility report from 2017. The report is propelled in accordance with the GRI standards core option. It focuses on core and supplementary aspects where they present a material significance to sustainability performance and have an impact on stakeholders. GRI supports ASX recommendation under Principle 7 to enable greater organizational transparency and accountability on non-financial disclosures. Beach has been appointing Ernst & Young to provide limited assurance in respect to some of the key metrics in the CSR report from 2018. By comparing each year's report, we find that Beach adjusted disclosure contents often to better present business activities relevant to the GRI indicators. The first paper we examined was Voluntary Non-Financial Disclosure and the Cost of Equity Capital, the Initiation of CSR. Researchers aim to investigate how disclosure of CSR activity through a standalone report impacts a firm's cost of equity capital. The paper hypothesized that firms with a high cost of equity are more likely to initiate disclosure and that disclosure is subsequently associated with a lower cost of equity. Corollary is that CSR disclosing firms are more likely to raise equity capital. This is an important hypothesis which enhances the validity of the experiment because it differentiates between a causal and associative relationship. If managers believe that CSR disclosure lowers cost of equity, they'll take advantage of this and raise more capital. After controlling for firm size, leverage, market to book ratio, long-term growth, industry and market effects, the statistical results provide evidence to support acceptance of all hypotheses. They also showed that the accuracy of analyst forecasts of financial performance improved with increased CSR disclosure. However, the report did have some problems. For instance, one result was premised on a change in COE immediately after initiating reporting, which does not address the fact that there have been changes in the perceived value of CSR disclosure and activity more broadly by managers and the public over time. 
In addition, it implicitly assumes that non-disclosing firms that raise capital do not believe in the causality, which forgets that firms often raise capital when they're short on cash, and that those short on cash can hardly justify expenditure on CSR reporting. Um, Beach first prepared a standalone CSR report in October 2017, and the results of the paper are partially supported by the behaviour of the company and stakeholders. Uh, specifically, using a regression model with the return of the All Lords Index as a predictor for share price to estimate variability and thus cost of equity, we can see that Beach had a reduction in their cost of equity that converged to industry-wide levels after initiating disclosure. In addition, the top 20 shareholders by size are detailed in the annual report, and from this we can see that institutional ownership has increased since publishing the first standalone CSR report. Surprise data, published on Factsit, shows that analyst forecasts have not noticeably improved. And finally, Beach raised approximately $301 million at an offer price of $0.75 cents per share at around the time that the report was released, which supports the results of the paper. The second paper we choose to analyze is the CSR Create Shareholder Value. In 2013, India published a new law required India firms that satisfy certain conditions to spend at least 2% of their net income on CSR. Researchers want to find out whether the mandatory CSR will help firms create shareholder value. In this paper, two hypotheses are proposed. The first one is the mandatory CSR rule affects shareholder value. This hypothesis is constructed on the basis of CSR's impacts discussion, which can be divided into shareholder expense view and the stakeholder value maximization view. In summary, CSR can either have a positive or negative impact on firm value. Secondly, researchers hypothesize the mandatory CSR rule brings less negative effect and a more positive effect to the shareholder value of firms that are politically connected or with high levels of advertisement expenditure. Inversely, firms that are in high polluting industries should face more negative effect and a less positive effect on shareholder value. This hypothesis considers the context of India where government regulation is high. CSR can be valuable for firms to enhance their political ties and make them more possible to get preferential treatment. Besides, if CSR becomes mandatory, consumer awareness of CSR activities will arise, and pressure from related environmental protection groups will also increase. Earnings per share is a key indicator of a firm's shareholder value. It measures each common share's profit allocation in relation to the company's total profit. As shown in the table, Beach experienced a low point in 2016, and the ratio has been rising year by year from 2017, which means the shareholder value of the company increases. In Australia, Despite CSR is not mandatory, companies operate in a highly regulated environment and they should comply with valid principles. As stated in the recommendation 7.4 of ASX Corporate Governance Principles and Recommendations, a listed entity should disclose whether it has any material exposure to environmental or social risks, and if it does, how it manages or intends to manage those risks. Besides, stakeholders' overall awareness of CSR is high. These facts indicate that companies with good performance in CSR and make disclosure timely are more favorable in the Australian market. The advantages of doing CSR were outweighed costs. For our third literature review, we selected the paper CSR Needs CPR, Corporate Sustainability and Politics. In this paper, the authors aim to argue for the need of current CSR metrics and interpretations to be expanded to include not only the assessment and evaluation of firms based on their sustainability impacts, but also on their public policy decisions. Uh, they argue that firms need to be more transparent with their stakeholders about their political activities and that their influence and support towards sustainable policies should be included in the assessment 
assessment of their social and environmental performance. This is to ensure that firms are not just relying on their CSR um, initiatives, which are disclosed in sustainability reports, to uphold a certain image, all the while preventing meaningful change by blocking um, progress in policy towards sustainability. The paper has acknowledged that there is often a case put forward against CSR and CPR, arguing that business leaders have no special expertise in social welfare or environmental practices and that their responsibility should lie with um, maximising profits while adhering, obviously, to disclosure laws. Um, however, it also highlighted that it would be unrealistic of some firms to um, support public policies that are incredibly financially disadvantageous to them. Um, but it does call for business leaders to consider their company mission and vision and to guide um, and to use this to guide their stances in the political sphere. Um, and it calls for CSR metrics, analysis and evaluation or to include CPR um, in order to encourage stakeholders to take corporate political action just as seriously as people are beginning to take CSR um, and therefore be able to more accurately assess a firm's full impact on their social and natural world around them. When we look at Beach Energy Sustainability Report, there is little to no information on their political action and stances. They mentioned that they have an anti-bribery and anti-corruption policy, um, and they do reference that political contributions or activities are not permitted other than for certain circumstances in Australia, which are obviously only permitted by law. Um, they then go on to disclose that they've contributed 250000 in various political donations, um, and it does state that they have reported this to the Electoral Commission. Um, it's promising to see that they have made this disclosure um, and that this information is available in their reports. Um, however, donations over 13000 are actually required to be disclo disclosed by law, um, so they're not being overly progressive in this. It's actually a legal requirement, um, and there's also no mention of where this contribution went, for what purpose it was donated, or how the money was used. We also have no idea how they may be contributing in other ways in terms of fundraising or participating in events or um, other activities other than donations, um, which can guide policy. Um, there is uh, just this month, the Victorian government granted Beach a permit to explore for gas in state waters, exploration for which has made, raised many concerns for environmental bodies. Um, and it should lead stakeholders to consider Beach's corporate political actions and the impact that they may be having upon society and the environment. The CSR report published by Beach is good on the whole. One of the key strengths is the use of guidelines set out in the GRI standards. In line with our literature review, we believe that CSR reporting is beneficial for companies because it enhances transparency. As such, adopting specific reporting standards improves their report. We also like the fact that they pinpoint their key perceived material issues, stakeholders and goals, then go on to objectively report their performance in achieving them. However, in doing so, Beach exposed himself to scrutiny. We can all agree that as a major player in the energy sector, Beach should be utmost concerned with the environment and climate change, but there is little detail about the communication and interactions they've had with environmentalist groups. Failure to provide this valuable information is a diminishing quality of the report. On the other hand, it is possible that the company simply doesn't view this as an important concern. This reconciles with the fact that the environment and conservation are ignored in preference of other initiatives, such as community, health and well-being projects in the firm's key focus areas. We would also like to see better engagement with and reporting about the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Finally, the report has limited external assurance that covered only select issues of safety, community investment, diversity and contamination. Although it is not a legal requirement for Beach to obtain an external audit for the CSR report, the failure to do so certainly affects its credibility. Um, the foremost improvement we would like to see is greater depth of disclosure about political activity. As we earlier discussed, we agree with the ideas put forward in the 2018 article by Lyon and others that corporate political activity is more likely to result in real long-term changes for stakeholders than CSR activity. Accordingly, Beach should be more transparent about the lawmaking processes they directly and indirectly impact if they want to improve the quality of their report. Thank you for listening. I hope that you enjoyed our presentation.